In this, the third presentation on binomial series, I'm going to start with the formula for the binomial series, which I hope you are now familiar with, and to choose a new value of n that we haven't looked at before. In fact, I'm going to choose n equals a half. We'll look at the series, and we'll actually evaluate it for a particular value of x to show how it can be used. We'll then talk briefly about the convergence of binomial series, and if there's time, we might look at one further n. Anyway, let's start with n equals a half here. Of course, n equals a half, the half power, is just the square root function. So we'll be looking at root of 1 plus x. I want to write out the first few terms of the series. Clearly it starts with 1. Let's look at the first term in the sum. Remember we've got to put n equals a half, and now we're going to look at the case where i is 1. In that case, n minus i plus 1 is just n. So the product on top only contains n. We have 1 factorial underneath, and that's just 1, and we'll have x to the power 1. So the first term is just nx, but n, remember, is a half, so that's a half x. OK, the next one. Still keeping n equals a half, we now need to look at i equals 2. If at any time I go a bit too fast for you, just stop the recording and check the value of the term yourself. With i equals 2, the numerator will start at n, and it will stop when we reach n minus 2 plus 1. n minus 2 plus 1 is just n minus 1. Underneath, 2 factorial is 2, and the power of x will be x squared. But now remember n is a half. So the next term looks like this. n is a half, so n minus 1 is negative a half. The 2 factorial is underneath, as demanded. Let's move on. Now i equals 3. This will be the x cubed term with 3 factorial underneath. On the top, we just keep subtracting 1 each time. So now on top we'll have a half times negative a half times negative 3 halves. We could keep going as long as we wanted, but I think I'll just do one more term, the x to the fourth term. I hope you can see how easy it will be to write that down now. Just follow the pattern. Although I'm going to stop here, I should at least write plus and some dots to show that the series continues indefinitely. Let's now set about simplifying some of the arithmetic here. We'll have to do it on the next page. I think we can at least sort out the first three terms here, remember them, and transfer them to the next page. Clearly 1 plus a half x is already just exactly what it needs to be. The third term has negative a quarter on top, but that's to be divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is just 2, so negative a quarter divided by 2 will be negative 1 eighth. Let's write out those three terms on the next page. Here they are. Now we need to go back and check out the next term, the x cubed. On the top we have two negatives. That will make a positive. We also have a half cubed. That will make an eighth. But there's a three on one of those halves, so that will be three eighths. We've still got to divide by 3 factorial. 3 factorial is 3 times 2. So taking 3 eighths and dividing first by 3 makes 1 eighth, and then by 2 makes a sixteenth. So this term simplifies to plus 1 sixteenth x cubed. If you found it hard to picture all that arithmetic just in your head without writing it out, just stop the recording and do the arithmetic yourself on paper. Let's look at the last term, the x to the fourth. This time there is a product of three negatives, so the sign will be negative. There's a half to the power four on top, that's a sixteenth. But there's also three times five. That's fifteen over sixteen. And there's the four factorial underneath. Four factorial is twenty-four, so that's fifteen over 16 times 24. I think I'd like to write this one out. 
Clearly 15 and 24 contain factors of 3, so we could cancel those. That'll end up with 5 on top and 16 times 8 underneath. But 16 eights are, five, are 128, so the term will be 5 over 128. Don't forget there were 3 minuses, so that's minus and x to the fourth. We can add that to our series now. I've added the dots again to show that the series continues. Well, once we've got such a series, what could we do with it? Well, actually, we could put in some values of x. That would allow us to find an approximation for square roots of various quantities. For example, we might try putting x equals 1. If we put x equals 1, we'll get on the left-hand side root 2. I'm writing approximately equals because clearly we've cut the series off and we're not getting every term. If we put 1 on the right-hand side, we'll get the following piece of arithmetic to do. In fact, since all the powers of x will be 1, it's just a matter of adding up the coefficients. When we type this out on a calculator, we get the following number. It's 1.3984, approximate. This binomial series has given us an approximation to the square root of 2. We could use it for other numbers like root 3 or root 5 as well. If you tap root 2 into your calculator, you'll find it's approximately 1.414. So this is not a specially good approximation at this point. We'd need to add a few more terms in the series to make it better. As an exercise, you might like to try substituting x equals 2 to see how good the approximation to root 3 is. I'm betting that as we get x larger and larger, the approximations will become less good. Actually, though, I've rather glossed over something here. In a rather cavalier way, I've simply chosen any x I want and substituted it into the series. We haven't really talked about the problem of convergence for the binomial series. We're not clear whether we're allowed to put any x we like in. For this series, studying convergence is actually quite an involved um, process. You can look it up on a site like Wikipedia. Just type in binomial series. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the results for convergence. In fact, it turns out to be dependent on the value we've chosen for n. If n is greater than negative 1, the series is actually convergent for all possible values of x. If x is big, the convergence may be rather slow. You might have found that when you checked out the value for root 3. It will take many terms in the series to get an accurate value. Nevertheless, you will get convergence eventually to the right answer. For n greater than negative 1, all x are allowed. So it was OK for me to put x equals 1 or 2 or any other number into that series because my n was a half and that was bigger than negative 1. Let's write this out. So that leaves the question of what if n is equal to or less than negative 1? When n is equal to negative 1, we've got the geometric series. We know that in that case, we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1. In fact, that turns out to be the right convergence condition for all n less than or equal to negative 1. In negative 1, we would not be allowed to do the substitution we just did with x equals 1. The series would not be expected to converge. To conclude, I want to look at one more simple manipulation we might have to do involving binomial series. The question arises, what if we had something like 2 plus x to the n, or 3 plus x to the n? Let's write that on the next page. I'm not going to do this in great detail, but the formula that we've got so far really relied on us having 1 plus x to the n. If we want a formula for something like 3 plus x to the n, we have to make sure we get a 1 in the starting position. We can do that by factorizing out a 3. It goes like this. First pull the 3 out, making a factor of 1 plus x over 3. Raise both to the power n, so that means there's a 3 to the n outside. And then use a binomial series, instead of for 1 plus x, just use 1 plus x over 3. In the summation notation, the only difference that will make is that we have x over 3 to the power i instead of x to the i. And of course the convergence will now be in terms of x over 3. For n greater than negative 1, it will converge for all x as usual. On the other hand, if n is less than or equal to negative 1, 
thing that we're expanding powers of must have its absolute value less than 1. That's no longer x, but x over 3. So in fact, this series would converge for absolute value of x less than 3. I'm going to stop here, except that on the last page I'm going to write out one more series, and I'm going to ask you to check to see if you can agree with the coefficients that I write. I'm not going to, do, to describe the details. I'll look at n equals negative a third. This is the result of my calculation. You check it and make sure I've got it right. You could also try using it to estimate, for example, 2 to the negative a third. Check your answer on a calculator. Does it converge? That should be easy to answer. I'm going to stop here.